Hey man, Chuck here. Whoa, why did my screen flash? That's crazy. I see I have 23 minutes to record this awful video. Uh, I have to make a video on my Z match. I promised, okay, <laughs> I promised this commenter, K4UL Ham Radio. I promised him I'd do a, 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 a look inside my Z match and talk about it for a minute or two. <laughs> or annoying me, you know. Depends on whether I babble too much. I wonder why my light. Well, because there is none. Oh, hey. <clears throat> my sister gave me this little green tray. Traverse City, Michigan is her. Uh, a home away from home that's dear to her heart. She loves Traverse City, Michigan. Plans to retire there. My first ever promo. And I'm not even getting paid for it. From Green Pharma. No, let me try again. Green Farm Cannabis Center, Traverse City, Michigan. In the northern part of the Lower Peninsula, destination of choice for snobby, rich, arrogant uh, people the world over. Green Farm Cannabis Center, Traverse City, Michigan. <laughs> I'm a little worried. I'm going to pause you. i got to bring up another web page. Welcome to Blozo's Solar Report. Check this out, man. Is this crazy? I just took a peek at it. Really? Sunspot number is 84 now? There goes my furnace. Uh, what's the solar flux units? I can't even find them. Uh, 110? Whoa. Look at that big, red, ugly guy there nearing dead center. Oh, I hope he spits out a monster CME and knocks down the, the uh, GPS system a little bit. Planet Earth needs a wake-up call. But that's not what worries me. Old part subscribers might remember a rant about Marianne and her tours, her northern tours her Aurora tours and I called her out because uh, I claimed that Mary Ann hates hams and uh, I claimed that Mary Ann prays for communications killing solar events for her Aurora tours and shortly after she's gone. Man, I'm not part of the cancel culture. They bring her back. Lady needs a... I'm not here to... Check it out, man. Come on. Come on and swing around to our... <laughs> Your solar report brought to you from Blozo and Green Farm Cannabis Center, Traverse City, Michigan. Destination of choice of snobs and wealthy bastards the world over. Now, we, let's go to the land of arcs and sparks. A literal nightmare. <laughs> because it's my bedroom. Hang on. Okay, man, you ready? We're not going in there. That's where the orange one lives. I don't mean Donald Trump. <laughs> I mean uh, my son's little orange hamster. And here we are. Let me uh, crank up the bariac. And, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Let's uh, get a little more light on this subject. There we go. That is a nightmare. I'm going to have to pause you. You think that's bad? Uh, <laughs> look at my dear old Helicrafters SX62A. Before you bust my chops, that's a dust cover.
I don't want the chassis dusty. Just like I didn't want my Johnson to get dusty, so I covered it up. <laughs> and uh, I've got to pause you for two main reasons. My tripod's buried amongst my uh, laundry, which I swear to God, I just did today. All right, man. Today and yesterday. That's the Z-Max. I'm going to pause you. We're going to clear a space off in the desk of doom and uh i'm gonna pop the cover off that thing so uh hang on i'm gonna pause you all right man this is the way i make garbage <laughs> make garbage videos this is the way you make garbage <laughs> videos like those uh <laughs> told you man i'm in weird mood I'm going to uh, grab the tripod and set you up, okay? And then we'll uh, take a serious, we'll have a little talk about that. Hang on. Hang on. Pause phone. Okay. Sorry for the change in lighting, but I turned them off. I want to show you the schematic of this. There's um, a handful of variations out there on the internet, but... Uh, this is a schematic of my Z-Match, okay? And, um... <clears throat> you see this 400 PF section with the switch connected to it? That's placed in parallel of this um, section so that you can, um more easily tune the low band low frequency bands and when you tune the higher frequency bands you don't need as much capacitance there and you switch one out of circuit that's what the switch does on the front panel of my z match i'll show you in a moment um this is the other capacitor each of these are just typical two gang 365 pf um, capacitors like you'd find used in um, old tabletop tube type radios typically of what they call an all-american five design um, so each capacitor this is one variable cap this is the other and um, this one is connected as shown this says 400 PF per section, mine were only 365. So, and its, balan it's uh, balanced output function is just due to the fact that it's got a, uh, a, a winding on the toroid core for the output that's floating. And if you want it unbalanced, you just close the switch, which ties one or the other, it wouldn't matter which references it to ground like your input over here on the left so that's uh what is a z-match it's kind of complicated i'm not an i'm not an expert i'm ignorant <laughs> um but basically you have a tuned input by this capacitor and this capacitor you have one section in parallel with this tap where you apply your input, the other sections in parallel with the 22 turn winding. So in effect, you are referencing your input above and below. Um, it's kind of acting as a center tap push-pull circuit in a way. It's odd. But uh, it's almost, I think what happens here, I think this section, uh, you know, I'm not even going to say what they do. <laughs> um, this is called your uh, antenna, and this is called the transmitter control. So this one, this cap in conjunction with the inductance of this toroidal uh, transformer resonates at your frequency at your chosen frequency it's very high q very sharp tuning both of these well one is more was sharper than the other and uh it can be pretty sharp but that's why i like it 
It's ultra high Q, ultra low loss, and when I use my ZMIT, for example, in my truck, when I go mobile, uh, I just reach over with my right hand and with one little turn of a knob, I watch my SWR hit zero, hit one to one. You know what I mean? It's ultimately the most the most convenient thing I've ever used in my in a mobile situation. <laughs> but that's a schematic. I better pause you and uh, turn the lights back on so I can ta have you take a look inside this thing. Hang on. Oh, I forgot to show something here. This and by the way, I hope I didn't scare you. It's not the mother mothership. Uh, I don't like it. I don't trust it. In fact, I'm scared to death of it. <laughs> Seriously, though, um, here's a couple of variations. You'll see what they did on the output. They used two different numbers of turns with a switch to select between them for a low Z and a high Z output to the antenna. <clears throat> Same thing here with a couple different variants of SWR indicator, you know. Uh, I think this one being typical of the QRP guys and, and the like. Nor oh, it says right there, didn't it? NorCal BLT kit. So there's variants, but uh, I'm just going to uh, show you my Z match now. I'm going to pause you. Hang on. I've shown it before, but there it is again, the rear panel, um, antenna connections, unbalanced antenna, balanced antenna, coaxial antenna, output to the transceiver. This is a switch that lets you choose balanced. Oh God, I could show it to you. Let's you choose balanced and unbalanced. I'm going to turn this around. i got to get in the habit of looking at the phone screen once in a while, and you can ignore the tape from uh, some test antenna somewhere in the, few, in the past. So anyway, that's a switch that lets you add an additional, in my case, it adds an additional 720 PF. Okay, I'm going to pause you here. Okay, now I'm going to point, it's a very simple circuit as you saw. I really don't have to, there's not much to show in this thing. Let me grab a pointer. Um, no, I'm going to just use my finger for this. The wire I used for all the interconnections was the same magnet wire I wound the toroid with. And it looks like it's about number, uh, it's hard to say, 14? Maybe, no, it's not either. It's 16. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> I could measure it. Um, if there's any interest in the gauge comment, and I'll, uh, I'll measure it with a with a vernier caliper. So the toroid, I believe it's the same as what's on this Anon, which is an FT140-43 core, but I can't attest to that. It's been a while since I built it. If you want to know exactly what type of core, I suggest looking at the QST Magazine, the ARRL QST Magazine, um, article on building the Z-Match. It's in all of their handbooks and um, I don't know what month and year it was originally published. It's uh, The Z-Match is from the 50s by the way. Um, so anyway, real quickly I used El Cheapo uh, um, Banana Post uh, jacks and uh, you know used uh, connectors and switches. Everything's used. The thing that um, you have to do when building this Z-Match is what you'll see is that both of these capacitors are mounted on a quarter inch acrylic uh, plate and uh, they, the, the, um, the frame of these caps has to be floating from, isolated from ground and it has to be isolated from each other so if you build a Z-Match you've got to mount them on an insulator um, so, and it has to be a relatively good insulator because you're talking some pretty high impedances at this point. And speaking of, I'm going to pause you and uh, zoom you in on something. Hang on. Okay. What I had to do 
I had to, I actually bought these two couplers because I made a couple and a um, couple attempts at making them actually and I, it didn't work out too good because uh, you have to put, you have to tighten the, the let's call them grub screws for Mark. <laughs> G6JBY, Mark, those are your grub screws, sir. <laughs> right? And, um, they need to put a pretty darn good grip and it's uh, not a problem on these uh, cap shafts because they had flats on them but these nylon rods not the case I actually uh, had to file a little flat ultimately on that rod to make it stop slipping you know um, nylon's kind of a slippery plastic but uh, what you want to do if you build these doing you using the same type of uh, broadcast radio you know caps that I used you want to properly clean them if they're used if they're old clean out the old lubricant from the bearings with some lacquer thinner that works excellent in a toothbrush or something and um, re-lubricate them with a light machine oil re-lubricate the two pivot points in the rear and uh, find and clean the two uh, in the middle. Zoom you in. In the middle where there's a little plate there that puts a, uh, it's a sliding contact. It's a contact for the rotor. Clean that. You have to have smooth, clean, working caps. Uh, so that's my Z-Match. Not much to it. The toroid is simple. <laughs> it's very simple. There's only two windings. And uh, I used hot glue to glue it down to the cabinet. This wire kept flopping around. So I found a piece of nylon, drilled a hole through it, and made a standoff. Because if this thing's vibrating, I don't want the tuning to go wacky. So anyway, that's my Z match. Hang on, I'm gonna pause you. That's our dear friend Al peering at us over top of that UFO. Maybe he's hiding behind the UFO. This is my Heathkit TC3 um, tube checker, tube tester. And uh, there's really only one component to replace in the whole machine, that cap. <laughs> um, there's, it's not worth doing a video on. The roller's in pristine condition. The switches are all very clean. Look at that. I don't deserve such good luck in buying old garbage. But, uh, from the nightmare workbench of Wirehead, a.k.a. Chuck, a.k.a. Blozo, the Humble Ham, from L, from the UFO, I wish you 73. Do take care, but do have fun. Life is way too short to hide inside and uh, not have some good clean fun. Take care.